and welcome to this super exciting bundle episode! A couple of weeks ago, I had the absolutely incredible opportunity of being the guest of honour at the Scottish convention, Scotiacon! Yeah, I had no idea Scotland had a con either. But I can honestly and unbiasedly say that it was one of my most favourite convention experiences ever! So let's talk about how it went so you can come and join me on the awesome Scotland adventure! Starting with the flights! We flew with British Airways! And saying that, I can already hear a few of you cringing through the screen. When we booked our flights, it started with Qantas. And Qantas lets you check in pretty much as many bags as you want, as long as it still stays under that one weight allowance. Which is really great, because I always need an extra suitcase for a fursuit. But what the booking didn't tell us is that British Airways only allows one check-in bag, even if your second bag wouldn't put you over the weight allowance. Cue an absolutely fun surprise of an extra 300 bucks just to get that extra suitcase on all our British Airways flights. Ugh. So yeah, just uh, keep that in mind when you're flying British Airways. When we landed, we absolutely whizzed through customs. Like it was literally five minutes of just scanning our passports and we were outie. It was so weird because I'm so used to filling in like a million and one different custom forms with my last 10 addresses and what I eat on Wednesdays, but nope, straight through. Australia is part of the British Commonwealth, so I think that's why it was so easy. So, super handy. We got picked up by Rick, one of the con staff members, and oh my goodness, he is great. We like clicked immediately and I was just getting more and more excited to meet all the other staff members. We were super confused though because like all the cars are on the left side of the road, just like Australia. But then all the roadsides are in like yards and miles, like England, make up your mind. We flew into Heathrow Airport, so at this point we are still very far away from Scotland. But they have this tradition of all the staff and all their friends in the area convoying up to the con the day before. So I thought the best way to meet everybody would be to, of course, go out for a cheeky Nando's. Now we have Nando's in Australia, but your English one is so much better! It's not fair! You have a Froyo machine! We don't have a Froyo machine! I feel so, like, ripped off right now! Hashtag Froyo for Aussie Nando's! Come on, let's do it! But anyway, yes, it was a super nice dinner and everybody was super lovely, despite us falling asleep like halfway through because the jet lag was hitting hard. That was definitely one of the hardest things to overcome because like, in America, yeah there's a 17 hour difference, but it's pretty much just a 6 hour difference but the day before, so that's not too bad. But to the UK, it's 13 hours, so we have just taken our day night cycle and swapped them. So I'm really glad we had a couple of days before the convention, otherwise we would have fallen asleep and missed half of it. The next day we hopped in on the convoy and we were just in absolute awe at the scenery for pretty much the entire 7 hour journey. I could try and put it into words, but I think I will just show you. in we had officially crossed the border into Scotland where we stopped at one of their servicey rest station things for some lunch and to our surprise and horror had our first encounter with haggis. Now I was keen to try haggis but what we had found wasn't quite your regular haggis. It was vacuum sealed service station haggis on clearance. Does anyone in Scotland actually go to service stations See this, go, oh, that looks great, and then buy it? <laughs> I mean, I assume not, because otherwise they wouldn't be on clearance. However, we did get to try haggis later on at the con, because it was in their buffet breakfast, and I didn't mind it. It was like a very strong lamb taste, mixed in with some spices and the texture of oats. A bit too spicy for me, and a bit too heavy for breakfast, but I think for lunch, on top of like some rice or something, it would be really, really tasty. Moving on though, we finally arrived at the Mercure Hotel in Livingston and going inside it immediately felt extremely cozy and relaxed. There was a fireplace right in front of you as you walked in and the whole decor gave off a really warm vibe. 
for good reason, because it's bloody four degrees outside. Unfortunately, at this point, I could feel my voice fading, and by Friday morning, I could barely talk or breathe. I think it was just running neon fur the week before, being shoved into a plane for 24 hours, and then the complete change in temperature just made my immune system go on strike. But I pushed through because I had my meet and greet panel. Thankfully, it went really well. It started off as a Q&A, and then as I started to die, it turned into Kiba ranting about how everything in Australia wants to kill you. Sadly, I didn't record it, but I know there's a copy floating about there somewhere, so if you know who has it, please, 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 please tell me. It was an absolute riot, and I am dying to watch it again. After that, we met up with our new friend Tack, who had informed us that there was a massive shop just across the road called Asda. So we decided to embark on a grand adventure. Asda is basically the UK equivalent of Walmart, and apparently the one we were going to was the biggest one in all of Scotland. We got there and yep, that, that was not a lie. Just endless and endless rows of food, clothing, knickknacks, and anything you could think of. <laughs> we went through pretty much every aisle in that Asda, including the entire aisle that was dedicated to Iron Brew. Iron Brew is basically the national drink of Scotland. It like kind of tastes like creaming soda, but not quite as sugar punchy to the face. Like it, it has quite its own unique taste, but it is very, very tasty. When we got back, we ordered some very nice fish and chips from the hotel for dinner and then passed out at about eight o'clock because jet lag. Saturday, we got a chance to check out the dealer's den. It was a lot smaller than I had thought it'd be, but the quality was through the roof. So many incredible artists that I had never seen before, and they were all super duper lovely and friendly. There was even someone who does those animated eyes as commissions, so there you go, there's all the information for all of you guys who've been asking me where to get them. Outside, there was also a stand for steampunk accessories. Steampunk was the cons theme this year, so they had invited a lot of people from the actual proper steampunk societies in the area, and it was so cool to see them happily mingling among all us fuzzies. I was feeling a little bit underdressed, so I decided to pick myself up a nice pair of shiny goggles. Just put them straight on my head and immediately fell in love. Like, I low-key want to keep it as a permanent accessory now. Then it was time for me to join the judges panel for the dance competition. I was crazy excited when Seal Fox asked me beforehand because I've always wanted to judge a dance comp. Like, I may not be a dancer, but I do have an extremely musical background and I've watched a lot of dance comps, so I would like to hope I have a little bit of merit judging them. But holy moly, there was so much talent on that dance floor, like, it was so hard to stop and write notes because I just didn't want to look away. Afterwards, we stood it up and went on some adventuring throughout the con space. Seal Fox thought it would be hilarious to put Kiba in his kangaroo suit, Nigel, and oh my goodness, he was not wrong. It was the best just watching Kiba go full bogan to really sell that over-the-top Australian character. I didn't think Seal Fox was going to let her out of that first suit. That night, I also got to meet Wee Scottish Lass, another YouTuber who's local to the area. She'd come to the convention to make a nice positive video about furries, and she made an absolutely brilliant showcase showing the convention, interviewing the staff, and even doing an interview with me. So please do go watch her video as well. It's very, very good. Since I was a lot more alive that night, it was time for some room parties. We got invited to the coveted tea shen party, where they had apparently prepared for us a traditional Scottish delicacy. Deep fried Mars bars. I wasn't sure what to expect when I'd heard it was a thing, but uh, it wasn't that. We gave it a go anyway, and oh God, it was just lumps of melted chocolate in soggy batter. I feel like it would go a lot better on the side with some ice cream to kind of lighten it up a bit, but on its own, yeah, no, can't really say I'm a fan. However, they made us a nice cup of tea to wash it down with, and as I'm sitting there in the corner holding my tea and watching everyone else conversing with their cup of teas, I'm just like, huh, this is exactly how I pictured a room party in the UK. Sunday afternoon rolls around and it is time for the group photo shoot. There was quite the solid turn off of fursuiters, and I honestly could have stood there forever thanks to the next to nothing temperatures. Who needs a headless lounge where you can just go outside and literally see the heat rising off your suit? We spent the rest of Sunday wandering throughout the comp space, sitting by the fire, chilling with people, saying hi to everybody, and before we knew it, it was time for the closing ceremony. It was quite the emotional roller coaster because they dropped on us that there wasn't going to be a Scotiacon next year and just play this slow montage of all the memories from all the Scotia cons over the years.
But wait, there's more. Bam! ScorchyCon 2021 is in Glasgow because we can't fit 400 people in this hotel. It's gonna be massive. It's gonna be big. ScorchyCon 2021. Woo! Yeah, they're relocating to Glasgow in a much bigger hotel, but need a bit more time to do that. So the next one's in 2021. They were just toying with all our emotions and it was absolutely brilliant. That night, Seal Fox very kindly let me borrow a snow cone to romp around in. Like, I had always admired that suit and I was so excited. Oh my goodness. I put him on and oh my god, it was the best. It was so much fun being a hyperactive rainbow husky and confusing everyone who was in the suit. And despite the suit being too big for me, it was still crazy comfortable. So now I'm just like, ah, oh, now I'm gonna have to get a Don't Hug Cacti suit now, aren't I? <laughs> But sadly, the convention had come to a close for 2019. And I, I don't think we had a dull moment the entire time. We have made so many new friends and both the staff and the attendees alike. And saying goodbye to everybody was definitely one of the hardest goodbyes I've ever had to do. It was a small convention, but a ridiculously charming one. The staff put so much love and time into running it. It absolutely shows. It can be seen and felt by everybody. So a huge <laughs> thank you to ScotiaCon for granting me that opportunity. Like, I, I didn't know what to expect, but any expectations I had were completely blown out of the water. If large furry cons can be a little bit overwhelming for you, and you'd rather just get up to some shenanigans with your close friends, then ScotiaCon is absolutely the convention for you. I cannot wait to see what they do with their new digs in 2021. I'm going to try my best to get there and see it myself. If you would like to keep up to date with what ScotiaCon is up to, I have put all their links in the description below, so give a follow, a like, and a high five. A patron shout out to Cat. Yep, it's just Cat, but you know, Cat's pretty perfect, so why add anything else? Thank you so much for the support, Cat, and thank you so much for helping to bring this video to these cats. But of course, thank you so much for watching. I would not be here without that. Oh, and a big shout out to any of the ScotiaCon guys that are watching this right now. Hi, guys! Oh, I miss you guys so much. Sasa Lele. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!